Good evening. Good evening. A little cool day in Spring City. Yep. It's cloudy and rainy too. But that's hopefully the sun will come as we continue to have that sense of inviting the light of Christ to be with us. The light of the sun is always a symbol of that presence of God. <coughs> so as we gather this night, we uh, continue our journey of uh, awareness. Uh, I don't know what's that. I can't give you a score on Notre Dame. That there is a bit of 24 a 7 at half time. <laughs> 24 7 at half time. Ooh, he scored three touchdowns in three minutes. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is really strange because I, the way this started tonight is I'm sitting in my room and I just came up and started setting it up. The phone rings is a good friend of mine who's living down in Florida, who's down in Florida right now. Called me up and uh, he's a great athlete. He's an all big time Tommy win. He says, uh, Joy, says, what's, what's going on here? What's happening with Notre Dame? They're losing. He says, I didn't know that. We better turn them off and start praying. <laughs> so, so I said, I don't know if my prayers are working, but it seems like something's happening. <laughs> at least my friend is at least feeling better to it than I do. Uh, but as we gather this night, let us uh, be attentive to uh, joining with all our people who are at home, all the people who are with us on our. Uh, when they're watching us on the TV and streaming and just connecting with us in a spiritual communion. We, we want to connect with them in that spiritual communion too. And so let us uh, be conscious of praying for them as they pray for us. And so let us just call for prayers for one another as we have. celebrate the second song that we have had. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light this candle of the wreath. May its light reflect the splendor of Christ with glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the peace of the Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Let's see the goodness of God's presence be with us. The power of God's compassion to be us, so we may live a holy life. Receive the Lord's blessing. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
The second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, he writes, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard the less, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to re repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames, and the elements melted by fire? But according to his promise, we await a new heaven and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found out without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Claudel came 
walking freely or locked the room. He had several palsies. He could uh, walk in a very awkward way. His speech was hard to understand. And sometimes he even had a hard time feeding himself. As he walked through the mentally Phillies, they were wondering, what is he doing here? And for a moment, they were surprised when they were asked, you know, which was interesting, they had a chapel for the police on a good day. When the chapel, he was going to speak to them. And they wondered, what can he say to us? And so, Fidel went in there and he began by just trying to put them at ease and saying, I know I'm not like you, I'm different than you are. And he said, but by God's grace, I am what I am. And then he began to talk for about 20 minutes about the blessings of God in his life, and an inspirational kind of framework of how God was really present with him and how he moved with God's presence to do many good things. And then he kind of summed it up in saying to them, he said, I know that you are pretty famous people, those of you who are maintaining the batting average at 350, BRA is a low number because Mike Schmidt and Steve Carlton are part of that team. And as he began to talk, he said to them in one way, somewhere along the line, we're all going to meet that day when they close the box on us. When they do that, one of the things is that uh, we will be the same. We will be the same when we close that box. So you may have great sports success and made a lot of money, made a lot of money. He said, that was really important piece for you, but it won't make much difference. And he says, I really don't, for me, I really don't need what you have. But he said, I might have something you need. And that is to be able to experience the Spirit of God's presence within you. And so he said that that was a movement of journey of inviting them to be attentive to this and sense of God's presence within. And we celebrate this Advent season, one of the movements is to maintain that sense of the coming of Jesus, I mean, the coming of Jesus' his own spirit into our spirit, and to experience that, and to look for that. And it press also, as the scriptures say today, to prepare the way for that. And so we stop and we look at what are those things that might hinder that from happening? What might hinder us if our job gets more important than our family? What happens if success becomes more important than God? What happens if the virus comes and takes away our spirit of joy, our spirit of living life and fullness? Then they said, well, maybe we have to change those things, not to give them power over us. Because they would be unholy. And if we prepare ourselves in that way, then the coming of Christ, which we celebrate in this movement of Christmas, and this coming of Christ to us, is going to touch our spirit. Hopefully it's happening as we move in this Advent season with an openness to that tabernacle. Come, Lord Jesus. Invite him in your own spirit. Be blessed by it. Have an awareness that that's probably the more important facet that Fidel would say. Possess that experience of God within us that brings forth a holiness of life, a goodness of life, something that can be celebrated and be thankful for. If we're missing those pieces, then maybe we have to open our spirit up to that goodness and make that prayer. Have an act. Come, Lord Jesus. Enter into my spirit. Be with us.
bringing forth the holiness in their journey. May the Spirit bring, bring comfort and healing to them. Pray for the well we live in, Lord, we pray that the wisdom of the Spirit may bring forth a goodness of patience and goodness of compassion for all people who are known, especially the leaders of our world and of our country. We had our own intentions this evening. Bless us, Lord, with your spirit, so that as we celebrate this Advent season, the light of your presence may become stronger in our journey of living it. Our faith may we be blessed always through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for your goodness we have received this bread we offer you through the earth and with human hands. It will become for us our bread. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual brain. Let us be God
gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
supper of the Lamb. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. 